Okay, I saw this article in my Trends Journal, um, and because I'm a Generation X person, I thought it was very interesting and I wanted to make a video about it. So let's read through it and then we're going to talk about um, if you are a, a Gen Xer, um, what you can do about your financial situation to make sure that you don't end up uh, not being able to retire. Okay, so let's read through this. Uh, Generation X, due to retire, but can't afford to. So I'm 51 as I'm recording this. So this definitely is something that weighs heavily on my mind, getting closer and closer to retirement age. And a lot of people in Generation X now are starting to become um, eligible for um, retirement um, age. So it's something that we definitely need to look at. The oldest of the 65 million member Generation X, which are born between um, 65 and 1980, will turn 60 next year, putting them within the site of retirement age. However, many will be unable to stop working. In 2022, the median household net worth for Generation Xers ages 45 to 54 was only $250,000. Um, that's about 7% less than the median for the baby boomers in 2007, uh, and it was adjusted for inflation. Okay, Generation X has been called the forgotten generation, coming between the much larger baby boomers and the millennial cohorts. Um, it also has been referred to as the latchkey generation, coming home from school to an empty house because both parents were working. Uh, Goldman Sachs has dubbed Generation X the 401k experiment generation. Our generation was one of the first ones to be um, completely without pensions um, and would have to rely on the 401k experiment uh, as well as other you know uh, outside um, investment vehicles uh, and brokerage accounts to be able to fund our retirements. Um, Generation X is the first uh, retirement where they were mostly expected to figure out their own retirement um, without pensions. The 401k was never expected to become Generation Xer's primary retirement savings vehicle. It is named for a provision in the tax code that was intended to allow executives to defer compensation paid as bonuses or stock options. Companies saw it as a way to encourage employees to start saving for retirement. By the mid 80s, the number of workers taking part in defined contribution pension plans, such as 401ks, outstripped the number enrolled in traditional defined benefit plans. Now the latter has almost disappeared. At the same time, Generation X has been dealing with student debt. It lived through the Great Recession, which ended careers and wiped out savings. And now the COVID war. Uh, and inflation have taken a further toll. Many Generation X parents also have their children living with them. Wow, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't even imagine that. Uh, partly due to those and similar factors, in 2023, Generation Xers aged 45 to 54, which is me, had a median balance of about $60,000. That's it. In defined contribution plans with mutual fund giant Vanguard, the company reported. That is a small compare that is small compared to financial advisors customary recommendation that workers have six times their annual salary uh, save for retirement age. So if you're making 60 grand uh, and they want you to have six times that um, saved for retirement, well how is that going to happen? Um, you know, six times 60 is 360. Well, if you put every bit of your money into that retirement plan, you might be able to do it. But, you know, as inflation has gone up over the years, um, you know, our wages certainly haven't caught up um, and kept pace with it. Um, you would have to really, um, let's say you started saving at 20 and you're then 50, that's 30 years of savings, 
you would have to save over half of your income, over half, for you to meet that requirement. I mean, that's pretty hard to do. I fully expect to work until I die, one gen, uh, Generation Xer told the Wall Street Journal. It is what it is. So what they said in the trends forecast, from a recent Oxfam study to the latest edition of the Boston Consulting Group's annual wealth report, the data is consistent. The world's middle class is being thinned out. As we've reported, while most people cannot afford to buy a home, rents have climbed more than 10%. Da la la. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So basically, we as Generation Xers are the first generation that are uh, pretty much on our own. And we didn't have the internet. So financial education was very sparse. If our parents weren't highly educated in uh, finances, in budgeting, in, um, you know, saving and investing, uh, then, you know, we're, tr we're totally screwed. Okay, so I want this channel to be educational for you. So if you are a Generation X, you were born between 65 and 80, <clears throat> I want you to listen close because we're going to dive into a couple things in this um, channel, in this video, uh, that can help you um, focus your attention, get the blinders on, and focus your money and attention on starting or continuing or ramp up building your wealth so that you can retire to something. You can retire and be able to take care of yourself and, you know, maybe even leave a little bit of generational wealth to your kids and grandkids. So um, let's dive in. So the first thing you need to do is to look at your numbers. So I know that uh, you need to write out a budget and nobody wants to do that, but if you're getting closer to retirement age, it's time. It's time to start writing these numbers down and getting yourself a plan. So how much money uh, is coming in, you need to know that, and how much money is going out. You have to also look at your retirement accounts. How much are you contributing each year? So for this year, the end of 2024, and of course you can um, keep paying on 2024 throughout uh, the beginning of 2025, um, as long as you tell your accountant how much you're going to be contributing. For 2024, you can contribute $8,000 if you're 50 or older into a Roth IRA. Uh, it's basically a little bit more because of catch-up um, uh, contributions. Um, and you can also do $23,000 um, with another $7,000 in catch-up contributions. So that makes $30,000 you can put into your 401k um, at, to, to max it out. If you have two people that have 401ks, that means you can save 60 grand plus a Roth IRA. Um, you know, you can start really saving a lot of money and let it work for you, okay? And you gotta also invest it in things. Um, and that's per person. So if your spouse is working, they also can hit those amounts. Um, the question is, are you hitting these amounts? If not, it's time to look at your budget and you gotta start cutting out the fluff. You gotta cut out stuff um, that you really don't need in order to have more money to contribute. You've got to uh, increase the gap between what you're spending and what you're actually making. And that margin is what you're going to use to um, invest and uh, start saving for your future. Um, also, you gotta look at what your salary. So maybe it's time to earn more money. Um, look at different companies. Um, I know right now a lot of people aren't aren't hiring as quickly, but when you have a lot of experience, which we do, um, you know they're probably looking for people that have more experience that can get the job done. They don't have to train them. They can come in as that role that they're hired in, and they can um, quickly get up to pace and start making money for the business. Um, maybe it's time to start your own business or even work a side gig for extra money that will all, and I mean put all of that into your retirement plans. So what I'm doing is my aim for my retirement is to only buy assets that pay me in cash flow. 
okay? Uh, go ahead and look and see what you're investing in. Are they traditional growth or value stock funds? If so, the only way you um, get cash flow is for you to sell them, okay? I know for me, I don't wanna sell anything that I buy, okay? So none of my investments am I going to plan on buying. Uh, so what I'm doing is only buying assets that pay me a drip of money, either monthly or quarterly. What these include uh, are high yield dividend ETFs, REITs, real estate trusts, or syndicated real estate deals, which is what I'm in. Um, you can do private equity and credit, which is also what I'm doing. You can also do oil syndication funds um, or just dividend um, paying stocks. All of these pay me monthly or quarterly. For now, I am reinvesting all of my cash flow, and I would suggest you do too, uh, to buy more of these assets so that they will grow and use those to just keep making money upon money upon money. If you're starting with a big fat zero or only have the average of $250,000 in your accounts or less, um, it's time for you to get really serious about investing. If you're already maxing out all of your accounts, you got to look into opening an HSA. Um, if you have a high deductible health insurance plan, um, you can't only use this money for health expenses later on without any taxes or penalties. But if you want, you can use it as cash too. Um, you just have to pay tax on it when you take it out. So um, you could go to Schwab or Fidelity um, and open up a brokerage account and um, start investing as much as you can in cash flow investments. So you can have a side um, investment brokerage account. I, I, that's what I do. I have multiple accounts everywhere uh, that I'm putting money into different assets. Um, now, of course, I'm not a financial advisor and you can certainly do whatever you want to do. I just want to give you some examples of things that you can invest in, okay? So if you're maxing out your retirement plans from your work, then you go into a high deductible health savings account plan if your um, health care plan um, allows it. And then open up a side um, brokerage account that you can start buying index funds, dividend paying funds, uh, REITs, um, whatever you want that can start, uh, you know, helping you accumulate wealth. Um, if you want to get into real estate syndication where a company buys real estate with money from its members, um, where I've gone to um, is check out Grant Cardone and Cardone Capital. That's where I personally have invested and they've been paying me every month, even through COVID, since 2018. He is very, very uh, responsible with how he purchases his real estate and how much money he puts down and he always has extra money just in case something needs uh, fixed or if uh, you know something goes wrong. Um, I think you can start with as little as five thousand uh, dollars but you know you gotta you gotta check them out um, tell them I sent you uh, but it's time now to start making more money um, and it's also time to cut out the fluff so that you can take that margin and tell it where to go. Uh, you got to start telling people no. Tell the kids no. You can't pay for all this stuff. Tell your spouse no. We're not going to be buying stuff all the time. It's time to start saying yes to your future. And that means that you need to invest more. What I've done is I've ramped up my savings into my investments to 67% of my income. But because uh, not because it's pleasant, okay? Let me tell you. I mean, I am crunching these numbers every month to see where, you know, there's more uh, fluff to cut, okay? But I'm doing it because I want to retire. And I want to retire sooner than 70, okay? And I think I'm going to be able to do it by 2030. Because I have a high... Um, percentage savings rate, I should be able to retire in 2030, okay? But whether it takes you 10 to 15 years, if you start today, 
and you can get yourself to a 50% savings rate, which once the kids move out and college is done, you know, you should be able to downsize, maybe move into a smaller place or move to an area that's cheaper. Um, I know that's a lot to, to think about and to, to possibly plan, but if you don't put in the sacrifice now and start thinking about these things and start uh, really ratcheting up your income and your savings rate, you'll never retire. Because the 4% rule of $250,000 uh, is only $10,000 a year, okay? Um, and unless you go live somewhere else, uh, you can't live in the US on $10,000 a year, okay? Uh, and at our age, um, it would take, um, I think 62, you can start taking Social Security, but then it's 67 for full retirement and then 70 for delayed retirement. So uh, you've got a lot of time between now and then to start really piling money into investments so that you can you know, support yourself when it's time that you, you don't have to work anymore, okay? If you plan on moving to Mexico or Thailand, um, you probably can get away with $10,000 a year to live on, but you'll have to wait for Social Security to kick in um, until you're 67 or full retirement age or 70 for delayed for those maximum benefits. Um, if you love working, then cool. Uh, don't change anything. You're on the right track with your puny $250,000 worth of investment savings or less. But if you're like me, and you want to retire on as close to my present salary as I can get, then now is the time to hustle and put as much money away as you can. You gotta cut out stuff and you gotta invest more money. You gotta either make more money with a side hustle or get a, a, a different job or get a raise, a promotion, but then you have to take all of that money and invest it. And then you use that money to buy assets that pay you monthly or quarterly cash flow. So your money is making you more money. I would suggest that you automate all of this. Automate your bills so they can get paid on time. Automate your Roth and 401k contributions so you don't see the money and think that you can spend it. Automate your other brokerage accounts and invest money out of every paycheck. Every paycheck, you should have something going to your future. And boom, you don't even have to see it. You'll be building wealth without you accidentally spending that money. Do it. Automate your wealth. All right. So that's it for the show. Thanks for watching. Um... What changes are you going to make if you're a Generation Xer like me? What changes are you going to make to start saving and investing more money in your retirement account so I don't have to read another one of these articles that are just crappy and, and make me depressed, okay? Let me know down in the comments. And until next time, this is Powerful Money Habits. <laughs>